Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Vangelis, and the Ocular Max branding has kicked off another sub-brand as their second release. This is Jaguar, first in the remix line, whose gimmick is pretty quickly apparent as you dig into the packaging and discover a legitimate one-to-one -one scale audio cassette case. This is precisely the tone setting opening experience that such a piece required. Also, the instructions are in the liner notes, and that's cute. So, kids, especially the ones who didn't play Gone Home. This is kind of what an audio cassette looked like. I mean, if it was covered in seam lines, weird chrome bits, and etc. But like, the shapes are pretty damn good. Not just the outer silhouette, but smaller critical details like the tetrahedral puff-out section along the bottom, and the little teeth inside of the reels. By the way, the silver strips on the outer edges are straight-up die-cast metal, giving this non-micro cassette some in-hand oomph. Not being micro means this is also way bigger than the official Masterpiece Ravage alt mode. It's an interesting scale experiment. We'll see how it pays off. If I had one big criticism here, it'd be that the cassette mode is almost featureless as far as paint detail. I mean, yes, repper labels will probably have a field day with this, but I feel weird about taking that for granted? I'd have loved to see some label tampographing done on one side of this thing, like the side that ends up inside a Jaguar's torso. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't survive transformation. Let's take a look at the process and hypothesize. Some parts of this transformation are predictable, but I was hugely surprised by the engineering of the center mass. There's a bunch of setup, flipping out a head and a tail, covering the tape reel sockets with swiveling panels, etc. I wish those panels had a soft locking click in Jaguar mode like they do in cassette mode. It's cool to see the hip rockets form up primarily through their thin mass, though. Anyway, after you get all the flippy bits flipped, You've got to unlock his legs from each other, and you have to do it by sliding, not pulling. There's even an extra piece of paper in the packaging specifying this. The fit is very solid, but yanking them apart could strip down the bits that groove together. With that final decoupling, it's finally time to see some cat mode mass, as the rear legs can totally swing down and unfurl. The main thing I noticed here was that the hinges connected to the die-cast parts are tight. The rest of the center mass comes together through a really unique twist on the old sandwich fold method. There are swivelly bars connecting the head and chest to the neck, resulting in some motions that feel incredibly unnatural the first time through. But they do make sense, and thankfully the internal cylinders all seem tough enough to deal with an inexperienced and unclean approach to folding it all down in place. This dude looks a whole ton like G1 Ravage. A whole ton! The robotically feline silhouette is strong, and the main center mass has some very welcome thickness. His color work is dead-ass simple, not really bringing any new paint to the equation for the most part, outside of the head. Jaguar's head sculpt is intensely G1 in its shapes and lines, and it features the best paintwork on the whole figure once you open up the mouth to expose blindingly bright white fangs and red mouth innards. The silver leg bits remain die-cast. What a weird sentence. But the hinge in the middle of the torso reveals one last shot of zinc, and altogether this Gokin content is used extremely well. Jaguar has in-hand heft, and a lot of it is focused downwards, giving him a very solid and stable standing base, despite his little murder paws. Also, I'm pleased to see the hip missiles integrated into the whole deal. I could give or take the vac metal chrome job, but I know that stokes a lot of other people's fires. Anyway, the question of scale. This guy is obviously massively larger than Masterpiece Ravage, like Jaguar's the mommy that birthed the MP Kitty. What works for me here is that when you put him next to the other official Masterpiece robot modes, he looks properly sized as a predatory threat to their bipedal heights. If you want to play the cartoon screen cap game, for sure, many iconic Ravage shots depict him at the Masterpiece toy's height, often scaled to pursuing humans in yellow hard hats. But I'd swear he is, at times, ballooned up to pounce on some of the Autobot car robots. The legs of a quadruped are usually where people like to start. This guy's front legs are ball socket jointed on with a cutout this way from transformation, which gives him a bit of an outward shoulder swivel as well. He's got double jointed knees, he's got an ankle hinge, and then this thing is mushroom pegged on so it can tilt, but it can't like angle tilt. Like it's it's never able to quite get away from using this as the heel, which I don't know if is necessarily a bad thing. But that's how the front legs work. The back legs are also ball socket jointed on with a transformation cut that also allows for a little bit of outward motion, although not this outward, but this outward, whereas this one can just go up this way a bit. It's all organic in a way, but uh, definitely isn't like, you know, straight up like 90 degree gigantic segments of motion. 
It's pretty decent though. There's a knee joint, very tough knee joint here where the die cast meets plastic, and then uh, a de degrade knee joint here, and then a ball socket ankle, which, if it's this way, you get a little bit more tilt, but it doesn't have quite the same amount of tilt as the mushroom peg, so maybe the mushroom peg was the right solution. Uh, anyway, that's those are some pretty poseable legs. Like, I've gotten this guy into a, whoa, a bunch of de uh, decent uh, outward-legged poses and, you know, standing at attention poses. And I'm, I'm quite happy with it. The tail can waggle on its transformation joint, but it can only go up this far. You can't get it to go straight up and, like, he's ready to kill somebody. Uh, this part of the transformation, uh, even though it doesn't really lock in anywhere, it does mean that he has a lot of center body twist and tilt, which is kind of cool. And then I'm of two minds where I wish that these sliding panels that cover up the, the real holes, I, I wish those things had tabbed together somewhere, but by not tabbing together, they allow for this kind of twist in the center of his body, which is a very unique feel, and I kind of like it, but it does mean he feels also, in a tactile sense, oddly mushy uh, in hand. But I've never had him, like, straight up fully detransform. Even these panels, like, they'll slide up now and then, but their hinge, well, not their hinge, but their swivel, is tight enough that it stays, it stays in place enough for me to not feel super annoyed. After, like, the first experience with this guy in a tactile sense, he felt weird. But after a day with him, I'm feeling sort of okay. Like, it's a very unique approach. It's definitely something to know about before you go in on, on picking this dude up. And the last byproduct of all that is the way that his head and neck pose, which is like, you know, I'll say it again, it's weird. So the different twisty things in here mean that you can get this, like, you can get this neck twist where, like, his actual head is, is ball socket jointed on, but if you twist it, the rest of his upper body can twist with it as well to allow for this, like, slightly wider and, and again, strangely organic degree of twist. And the same thing, like, looking up and down. Like, there's a transformation joint there, but, you know, these two different ball socket joints working in tandem. But then if you want him to look left and right, you know, the ball socket that his head is attached to only has this amount of wiggle, but then if you start using these piston-y hinge things that his head is attached to as well, you can get a bit more. Um, and I don't believe this is stressing anything. Like, it, it's a little, a little tough, but it, it moves quite naturally, so... I don't know, I, I kind of like it. Uh, it is weird, but I kind of like it. And you got, you know, this much range of looking up and down. You've got all together about this much range of looking left and right. You've got twist and tilt. And of course, his mouth can also open to reveal all that pain. So, Ocular Max Jaguar, Remix 01 Jaguar, is a, a strange and weird feeling thing, but... I kind of like the end result for all of its ups and downs. It's extremely unique, and uh, whether or not that's for you, that's up to you. I kind of like it. There's no scenario I can see where a Masterpiece Soundwave alternative is made to hold the Ocular Max cassettes in his chest. End of line. That may well end your interest in the piece right there. Speaking for myself, the larger and beefier robot mode is a joy to see, and still fits into the G1 cartoon's more phenomenal pseudo-scale decently enough. Also, I am way into the idea of revisiting the cassette bots as actual audio cassettes that I had growing up, rather than micro cassettes that I encountered all of twice in my childhood life. The cassette case packaging is the clincher, popping a delicious cherry on top of the style sundae. As for the build, it seems up to par with my one other Ocular Max toy so far, with a tactile mushiness that introduces about as many pros to the experience as the cons I feel it delivered. Most collectors will be into this for the cat mode alone, and I do feel it turned out acceptable in that regard. But for me, I needed this Walkman-sized cassette experiment to work both ways, and so far, I feel like it has. It makes me excited to see that shape turn into little pile driver men and tiny avians. Bring it on! Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and while Remix Jaguar debuted in a limited Planet Steel Express sale, a second release is already on the horizon. As more of them get out there, I hope somebody properly equipped can answer the hardest question. Will Jaguar actually fit into a cassette deck?